Today in the studio here at New Malden Studios is Sally Klein O'Connor, all the way from the USA. Sally, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be here. Well, I'm delighted, and the reason is I've had the, the preview of your <laughs> session producing beautiful songs, music from the heart. Can I say that? Thank you. Sally, you've got such a testimony as well. I mean, I've got a few notes in front of me, but there's no way I'm going to be able to pack all of these in as, as nicely and succinctly as you will put it. <laughs> so share with our audience a little bit of your background. Well, I'm, I'm Jewish, and uh, both my mom and my dad, Jewish. Uh, I'm told somewhere in the line there was a rabbi. I don't know. <clears throat> But uh, so anyway, I come from a Jewish background and I was born and raised in Los Angeles. And um, I think that, I mean, I really think that God always is inviting us, go, always reaching out to us. And um, when I was little, I had a, an accident happen in my life. I was bitten by a dog on my face and I had 100 stitches and I was, um, I was kind of outcast. I was called Scarface. And it put me away from people, but it also made me aware of God as a little kid, you know, in a little kid kind of way, in an eight, nine-year-old kind of way. I mean, I would, look up at the, I would look up at the sky, and I would be moved by what I saw, and I would be drawn to what I s saw. It's kind of like, uh, I think C.S. Lewis described it as bittersweet longing. So I would have a longing for what was behind the sky, but I didn't... You know, I didn't know exactly what was behind the sky. I thought of it as God, but not, you know. But it was years. It was a lot of years, you know. And then there were different things that happened in my life. My um, parents, after many years of marriage, went apart. They didn't, you know, divorce, but they were no longer together. And my brother died very young. And there was a lot of hurt in my life. And there was also a lot of hurt from being a child who was kind of outcast from all the other children. I, rejection was a very big deal in my life. And I wanted to know, I wanted to know if there was a God. I wanted to know truth, because I was a big truth person. And um, a friend of mine, uh, sometime after college, gave me a book by C.S. Lewis called Mere Christianity. And I only read it because I'd read um, uh, a fantasy of his, uh, really, I guess more like an allegory, uh, The Great Divorce. It was a great book. And it was very convicting. But it was a fantasy, and it was like, you know, but I liked C.S. Lewis, so my friend gave me this book. And I, I read it, and it started out where I was. I thought of myself as an ethical person, as a moral person, as somebody who wanted truth. But he wound up at the end of his, you know, book, making the statement that you have to believe in the person of God, and who is Jesus. And I said, I don't think so. Close the book, <laughs> you know? And I just, I, I, I was just like, in my heart, I was just like so angry. It was like, he said this thing, I slammed the book shut, and, in, and inside my heart, you know, it was like, well, what happened with my brother? What happened with, you know, all these things, you know? And I was like, how could you be real? And if you were even real, why would you bother with me? There's like billions of people in the world and why would you even bother with me and 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 just you know and that night I went to bed I, I'm sleeping and I wake up in the middle of the night and uh, the Lord uh, just filled me with his love just touched me with his love in my body my soul and my spirit it was an amazing experience and I, I was in this moment you know I knew that this was God. I didn't really want to know that this was God, and it didn't matter. I knew that this was God. And I also knew that there was nothing in me that could bring this forth, you know, subconsciousness and all that kind of thing. You know, it was like this was pure love. There was no shadow in it. There was no pain in it. There was no sorrow in it. You know, Jewish tradition, when you get married, you know, you break a glass. Part of it is because you remember that sorrow is present in, in almost every joy. There's some sorrow in every joy, even in joy, you know. There was none of that in this. There was just the pureness of love, you know, that was just overwhelming. And then it was gone. And then I had to make a decision because I thought of myself as an agnostic or an atheist, and I, I had to come to grips with that God answered me that night with his presence, you know. 
I mean, I wouldn't have said it that way, but. So I started taking some steps toward God and I accepted that there was a God. And then I came uh, on Yom Kippur of 1984, I came to a Messianic synagogue. Wasn't planning, a friend of mine took me. I wasn't planning to ask the Lord to be Lord of my life, you know, but I, I did, you know. So. And the reason I've let you just share <laughs> without interrupting was it's such a beautiful testimony and I didn't want to spoil the moment. And just as much as the viewers are going to be delighted and intrigued really with the music that is going to follow in the breaks that in between this uh, testimony and also your experiences in life because you as I said earlier you write the most amazing songs the lyrics the music you play so beautifully you perform from from your heart uh, I've never I haven't seen that for for many many years uh, so tell us a little bit uh, about what happened when you came across this Jesus did you think, my goodness, this, my whole life's going to change. How is my family going to react? You know, what, was it plain sailing from that moment? No. Uh, I, I was, you have to, you have to realize, when, you know, that night when I came to the synagogue, um, I hadn't been in a synagogue for many years because I was angry about that. But when I came to the synagogue that night, the, the, the rabbi who was leading it, uh, had come from an Orthodox background also. And um, he's very human, very, we, in Yiddish we say mensch. He was a mensch, you know. And that was good because I really, you know, you any artificiality, yeah. I'd have been out of there. Yeah. So he was very real. And I, um, so he came around to talk to me after the service is over. And he says, so, you know, and I said, well, so, ever seen Invasion of the Body Snatchers? You know, it was a science fiction movie, you know, yeah. where plant pods take over people's minds and bodies and everything. You know, that was my view of Christianity, you know. And, and I, so I said this to him just like that, you know. And he says, yeah, I have. And I said, so I looked at him and I said, so where do you keep your plant pods? He said, they're in my office. You want to see? You know, so I, I, went, I went with him in the office and my friend who had brought me we uh, we'd known each other since high school. He's also a Jewish believer. Been very shy about telling me, but he he invited me. You know, so he went and we're going over to the office, and he's crying, and I'm going, "What are you crying about? This is not a big deal. We're going to his office. This is you know." But I I came out of there, and I I had I did pray. I asked I asked the Lord to come in my life, and then as we were driving back, we 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 stopped on Mulholland Drive. It's very you know kind of vista oriented place and I you know you see the whole valley there and I stood there and I said no I really want to know you I really want to know you I really want to know you but I you know not playing any games really want to know you and the Lord has been very gracious to me you know I I wrestled with scripture with God because I never read the Bible so I fought about things and and I say well show me how this is true you know and the Lord would meet me in that and he would show me you know